Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. Welcome to another review of a beautiful vintage fountain pen. Today I have for you this wonderful, wonderful celluloid from um, Italy. It is a button filler, and it is rather small in size. I... Um, I think it was meant for the ladies. One of uh, the things that makes me think of that is its uh, small size. And just for a comparison, guys, I have here a modern Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146. And uh, you can see the difference in size. But uh, I consider it to be a lovely, lovely fountain pen. In fact, one of my favorite fountain pens is the lady size fountain pens because they are very, very beautiful. Uh, always the ladies had that uh, uh, sense of style. They l like beautiful, beautiful things. And I have another celluloid right over here with the same ring at the top. I have also a small metallic one with the same ring. And I have also a American Parker from the 19, uh, late 1920s and the 1930s with the same type of um, ring. In fact, this ring was meant for the ladies to wear this accessory at uh, their necklace so um, you always had uh, a writing instrument close to you and it's very very portable and they were very light also I have here a antique pencil holder right over here with the same ring and also an American piece that had the same ring you can see their traits, most of their traits, um, they are quite small in size and they are very, very practical. I bought this beautiful, beautiful celluloid recently. I did not pay a large sum of money. This wonderful piece cost me 300 lace, the equivalent of 60.76 euros or 66.32 US dollars. So I think I've made a nice, nice deal. I identified it as an Italian piece because technically engraved on the beautiful barrel, we have Columbus 50 and the brevet number. I'm not so sure that the first is a 1, 1, 0, 2, 0. Um, nine four or if it's a brevet number four zero two zero nine four what can i tell you about this brand the columbus brand well the columbus brand was founded in 1918 by two brothers in milan i think milano italia and it was one of the first fountain pen manufacturers from italy as you can see in uh, this material, we think of the Parker models. And in fact, I have two Parker models. Not um, the same pattern of the celluloid, but different colors right over here. One is my favorite, this wonderful, wonderful blue. And this is a green uh, or a gray celluloid with the same pattern. This time I have this pattern from Italy. Practically the Columbus pens, like many other similar products in Italy, back in the 1930s and in the 1940s, were um, imitations or were um, influenced in the designs by the models produced um, f by well-established uh, American companies. But uh, those wonderful pens were uh, produced locally in Italy, so they could be sold at much lower prices. However, they were of good quality and of um, 
excellent designs, which uh, makes uh, this company, the Columbus one, among one of the well-established Italian producers from uh, that time. Interesting enough about this Columbus piece, it's uh, that we have a uh, button filler. We have here the cap, which is made out of the same uh, celluloid material. And also we have a beautiful, beautiful gold nib. Let me show you the gold nib. We have uh, engraved on it Columbus 585. Let me show you the nib. So Columbus 585. And I think we have uh, back at the base of it a 1 and a 5. The feeder is uh, quite interesting, it's an ebonite feeder and uh, this nib has a little bit of a problem, I bought it like this. You can see the small tines are uh, misaligned and we will see that when I will do the writing sample with it. Also it needs a new sack and I think I can show you that. Well, guys, interesting enough, when I bought this model, it had an interesting, interesting feature. And I'm sorry that I can't show you that feature, but imagine this. I, um, there was a little gap here, so the pen was uh, not close, in, in a, close uh, till the end. And the reason for that is that right over here, guys, Right over here, you can see this piece. Um, the original sack was tied to this piece by this little thing. Let me show you. I've dropped it. Let me see where it is. And in fact, it's so tiny that I've lost it. Let me see where it is. Oh, yes, it's here. So I don't know if you can uh, see it, but I will try to zoom close to it. So imagine that this little wire was um, put like this. And the reason for that is that it, um, its role was to secure the sack. So this had uh, the sack replaced and uh, the person that did that repair. I don't know, maybe it uh, does not have a quality shellac to hold it, but um, they uh, turn to this uh, <laughs> contraption right over here, which is a brute way to fix it, but I guess it worked. I had to show this, guys, because I find it very, very interesting. I usually don't know how to replace the sack. I know that it is a quite easy operation. You can see there's still a gap right over here, so I will try to... Okay. Now it uh, closes perfectly. Uh, like I, I told you, to replace a sack is not uh, such a complicated thing, but... Um, I always postpone um, replacing the sacks. Uh, I know that I need to acquire from the different sites from the internet a special ink sack and uh, depending on the size uh, of the body uh, there are different sizes of course you can uh, cut them and uh, um, give them the right dimension. I don't know if they took in consideration also the uh, diameter of uh, that inner part that goes over there, but I think that also the diameter is a good, good, is an important aspect when you try to remove um, or to replace the ink sac. So, guys, this is the reason that um, I will only dip the pen in ink. And before I will do that, let me leave uh, the dimension of this beautiful, beautiful pen on the screen. 
And guys, I will leave the dimensions. You can see it's posed quite, quite well. I don't know. Um, yes, I will also change the angle of the cameras, but uh, first of all, let me show you the other Columbus pens that are in my collection. And um, I have here two Columbuses. Those are Columbus Extra extras and um, let me show them to you guys one is uh, number 90 and the other one is number 92 you can see that uh, they have a different uh, type of uh, filling mechanism you can see the review of this one on my channel unfortunately this large one does not uh, have its original name so i until i can find a suitable name um, it has also a crack a chip here but uh, nevertheless a wonderful wonderful celluloid different types of italian celluloid by the same manufacturers as, uh, as you can see again this pen i think it's from the 1930s or the 1940s i know for a fact that uh, in the 1950s the celluloid was replaced by the injected plastic so this means that this is a pre-1950s model and it surely seems uh, to resemble the Parker from Americas okay now guys um, with your permission let me put this over here and let me change the angle of the camera like this guys let me put my notepad over here okay and i have here another review well maybe i need to put this uh, on another type of uh, let me see let me try to put it right over here and i hope that i will have the right angle uh, i think it's okay okay so for the writing sample, I thought to myself that I should match the color of this beautiful, beautiful celluloid. And I have here a red ink, Faber Castell Rot red ink, 30 milliliters. It's quite an affordable ink. I don't have uh, much in my stock, but I think I will do with it. So simply dip the pen in ink, guys, like this and okay oops i think that's the cap sorry about this yes it's uh, it should hold yes okay i will leave it open guys and now let me see let me see if i can do a little zoom hmm I still don't like the angle of the camera. I'm sorry, guys. I will uh, return to this angle. Let me focus like this. Oh, now it's... I think it's perfect right now. And I hope it will uh, zoom. Let me see. Come on, come on. Zoom, zoom, zoom a little bit. Yes. Wonderful. So, uh, okay. I forgot the tissue guys so I have to clean it with the tissue at least the grip section and I have a little drop right over there but it's uh, manageable so what do I have here guys I have here a beautiful Columbus Columbus 50 it was made in Italy made in Italy and uh, I don't know for sure if it was made in the 1930s or in the 1940s it is a beautiful button filler button filler with a gorgeous gorgeous celluloid now I will zoom gently gently out okay like this it fit is fitted with a 14 karat 585 Columbus nib 
and now I will try to show you the flex of this nib and you can see that the flex is present I need to dip it again in ink for me to show you that wonderful wonderful flex as you can see it has that flex I think it has some residues of a blue ink because you can see here uh, we have a different uh, color definitely you can see here that uh, the uh, flexibility of this nib and in fact let me see if I can gently zoom for you to see yes right here I can show you the little tiles that move and you can see they gently gently move when I push on them and this is one of the reasons that this nib has uh, this uh, little gap between the tines. Definitely it needs the attention of a nib master. But this is very 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 nice in my point of view. So a wonderful wonderful flexible nib. You don't see a flexible nib nowadays. It should be a very very juicy right and you can see it's very juicy and now let us test if we have some line variance so here i don't apply pressure and here i'm starting to apply pressure and you can see no difference so no visible line variance it is quite a pleasant pleasant writer and um, i'm glad that i've uh, acquired it let me see how it does the signatures so quite well also the signatures and now i will dip it a little bit more because i want to tell you about the fox so let me change a little bit the angle i will try to write as large as i can so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so although it has this feeling of a scratch it did, did, did not scratch i i think it's a very very good writer and uh, a very very good looking fountain pen a ladies fountain pen and i already told you the models meant for ladies are one of the beautiful um, the most beautiful um, pieces in my collection i always try to buy them and this celluloid is amazing 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 guys and uh, again i bought it for 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 a very nice price so for around 60 euros or 66 us dollars i think i did uh, quite quite nice again the nib needs a little bit of attention again this needs to have um, a new ink sack and probably the mechanism is doing okay inside of it i don't know maybe it needs to be replaced but again a nice addition to my collection tell me what you think about this pen guys this was its review i want to wish you to have a nice day my dear friends wherever you are i will see you here again with uh, another episode till uh, then bye bye and uh, God bless you all, my dear friends.